So thanks a lot. Uh, so my presentation will be divided within three parts. The first one uh, will be uh, something which is important to say as a, some kind of background for the Czech constitution development and the constitutional matter uh, in general. Then there will be the part dedicated to the development of uh, 1848 and um, next years, because uh, generally we can say that uh, there was a period between 1848 and uh, 1867 which established the Austrian, Austrian constitutionalism with which was strongly associated because, as Professor Neshvara said, uh, contemporary Czech Republic was the part of, uh, of Austria during this uh, period, or better to say, Bohemia, Moravia, and Silesia. And the third part of the presentation will be dedicated um, on the topic of, uh, of the influence of this development of, uh, we can say, to the, uh, today, constitution, uh, consideration, constitutional issue of uh, the Czech Republic. Uh, if we are talking about the first constitution, uh, that's the matter sincerely, which is uh, still full of question, because um, generally in the world we could ask ourselves, what was the first constitution? Um, for example, uh, people from San Marino could say that the first constitution came from San Marino. Uh, some authors, but unfortunately only from the Czech Republic, uh, says that the first constitution was the so-called Bohemian Confederation. Uh, but uh, nowadays we know that if we are talking about the constitution, uh, the title is not enough. There must be also the distribution of power, the individual rights of, uh, of a person, the importance of people in general, and also there should be the catalog of fundamental human rights and the direction of the state power. Now, uh, thanks to that, we are talking about the modern constitution, and we can say that the first modern constitution uh, is associated with the development uh, in the today United States, mainly uh, with uh, Virginia. If we are talking about the Constitution, <laughs> just thanks to the title, we should mention the so-called land ordinances, which was a little bit constitution, a little bit civil code, a little bit criminal code, a little bit civil procedure order. It was uh, sincerely everything. Uh, the first examples of that uh, came from the uh, period of the reign of uh, Przemysl Takar II and Charles IV, but uh, there was a little bit of conflict, conflict between the nobility estates on the one side and the ruler on the other side, and thanks to that fact, uh, Charles IV, uh, he did not want a conflict with the nobility, so he said that the only one example of his, uh, of his document was destroyed in the fireplace, but uh, we are so lucky because we can find other examples uh, and samples uh, in archives of uh, old noble Czech families. Uh, the first land ordinances uh, came from the beginning of the 15th century, but as I said before, that was not the constitution in the modern uh, point of view. Uh, as I mentioned before, the Confederation, uh, Confederatio Bohemica, uh, seems to be uh, something like a modern constitution, but unfortunately, it lasted only for uh, 15 months. And sincerely, uh, beside Czech authors, uh, it's not uh, well accepted as the first con constitution in the, in the world. Uh, it was mentioned here before, uh, before lunch uh, that there is also the great importance of the Austrian civil code. Um, because um, Austrian civil code, and thanks to the development of Europe generally, or civil codes in Czech Republic, Slovakia, and so on, uh, has a little bit constitutional matter in the civil code itself. Uh, if we are talking about legal personality and legal capacity, that's the matter which is strongly affected with, um, with, with the catalog of fundamental human rights. So there is written that someone, a citizen, a foreigner, has a right of something, but this ability to have the right came uh, from, the, uh, from the civil code. The reason is quite simple, because first civil codes uh, were adapted before first modern constitution. So nowadays it's a thing which is absolutely obvious, but uh, in a kind of hyperbola, we can say that the civil codes uh, used to be first, uh, first constitution. Uh, if we are talking about modern constitutionalism in, uh, in Czechia, uh, it's quite funny that at the end of the 18th century was openly said there is no need of constitution. Um, 
as we know, because that's the topic of our confederation, a uh, very important period was the revolutionary year 1848. If we are looking on this topic from the Czech point of view, uh, during the March uh, 1848, there was a meeting in Prague, and we know uh, that during this meeting, there were pieces of information uh, from Hungary, but thanks to the censorship, uh, the participants there were not well informed in all, in all possible ways. But uh, the result of the, of the negotiation uh, was the first Prague petition. It must be said also, if we go back, uh, that the Confederation of Bohemia was the result of a uprising of Czech states who started a fight against the ruler, the Habsburg ruler, and the end of the uprising was the execution of the main persons of this uprising, and also the emperor answered in the way that he uh, provided the so-called renewed land ordinance of 1620s, which was, uh, there was a wonderful preparation because there was a committee in Prague which prepared the text, sent it to the Vienna, and from Vienna uh, they received absolutely other text. Because there was the concept that uh, estates as the rebels lost everything, or all privileges, all or uh, old rights. Uh, the renewed land ordinance is the symbol uh, of, the, of the development for next many years, but it was also a symbol of destruction of Czech uh, politicians and uh, all Czech independents. Uh, so why I'm talking about renewal land ordinance? Because when the first Prague petition was prepared, uh, they were really afraid of the reaction from Vienna. So it was written uh, in the as humble way as was possible, because they don't want to have another conflict uh, conflict uh, with, uh, with the ruler, because um, they remember what happened 200 years ago. Uh, the first Prague petition was sent to Vienna, but uh, it was received during the beginning of the revolution in Vienna, so the answer was not uh, as was expected, so then there was the second Prague petition, and there was written, besides other topic, that uh, there is the interest to have, uh, we can say, it, um, uh, location of future Czechia, but there was also the problem between, uh, between uh, the Czech representatives on one side and Moravian representatives on the other side, because in Moravia, there was, we can say, uh, quite a big group of Germans who were not interested to, to share their independence with the Czech, Repub uh, Czech representatives or uh, representatives in Bohemia. So uh, then these two petitions uh, had an answer. It was from April 1848 when the emperor uh, provided some kind of uh, uh, answer that everything could be handled and so on. But unfortunately, unfortunately for the Czech representatives, uh, it was just um, uh, some kind of promise. If we uh, skip through, there are uh, the constitutional development, which was the same like uh, in Austria. What I would like to mention is the fact that during 1848, Moravia adopted own constitution, but it has the same disadvantage like many other documents from this period because it was adopted, but it, uh, it had never been in force. Uh, if we are talking about, uh, about uh, further development, we should mention uh, the parliament, which uh, was uh, firstly in Vienna, and then uh, it was moved to Kroměříž, Krems. And uh, during this period, uh, there was a preparation of the new constitution of, uh, we can say, Austria, the monarchy. But uh, unfortunately, the only one part which was prepared, uh, for, we can say nowadays, from the 90% was the part about the fundamental human rights. The rest of the constitution um, had never been adapted because of the fact that there is the, there is the new constitution, the March constitution, and then the further development which should be, uh, which should be mentioned from general point of view. Uh, we can say that the, the uh, beginning of constitu constitutionalism ended very soon with the so-called neo-absolutism, which a little bit destroyed these constitutional rights, but on the other hand, it was the wonderful period of uh, economic development. 
Uh, then uh, we can talk about the, the coming back to the, to the constitutionalism in 1860s, uh, which was provided mainly uh, with the uh, December Verfassung, the, the December Constitution of 1867, which was really important from the, we can say, Austrian point of view. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it, was, uh, it was connected with the compromise with Hungary, uh, there was a wonderful presentation about the April laws from the Czech and Slovak uh, point of view. We are not talking about April laws, but we are talking about uh, Bratislavská Marcová ústava. So uh, that is in English, uh, Pressburg or Požoni March Constitution, because from our Czech and Slovak point of view, it was much more important that it's from Bratislava uh, than that was sanctioned in, uh, in April. I'm talking about this document because of the fact that the development between 1840 and 1867 could be could be taken in one line because uh, there were some uh, cutting we can say but still we are talking about one uh, one development which ended in the modern constitutionalism which was uh, given then f into the constitutionalism of independent Austria independent Czechoslovakia and other states which were established uh, at the end of the at the end of the monarchy if we are talking about the importance of the development of 1848, uh, firstly, I would like to mention the concept of the people, because if we skip through the all constitutions of uh, 19th century, we can say that the most important uh, term in the constitution is the people. There is a there is a picture from 1948, where is the quotation from the from the proposal of Kromněříš of 1848-1849, where is written that uh, every power in the state came from the people, and there, there is the quotation from the then new Czechoslovak constitution of 1948, where it was written that the Czechoslovak state is the people, a democratic republic, and the, uh, the people is the only one source of the all power in the state. So this concept uh, was still present in the constitution development in, of the Czech Republic of Czechoslovakia with a small difference between 1960 and 1989 when we had a mention about the working people in our constitution. So not the people in general, but working people. Uh, as I mentioned, and it was mentioned in, uh, in the presentation of Professor Neshvara, it is also important that uh, there was the introduction of the human, uh, the concept of the human rights. Uh, from the Czech point of view, it's important from the side that uh, this catalog was mainly uh, prepared by the, by the parliament in Kromněří, so that's the association with the development of Czech lands. But uh, on the other hand, um, if we are talking generally about these catalogs, uh, the constitution of 1867 uh, introduced the new catalog. Our constitutional char charter of 1920 had two uh, catalogs, one for everyone and the second one for minorities. But if um, we are able to cope with the matter of this uh, issue in the period of the first Czechoslovak Republic. Uh, it is a wonderful example that you should have the catalog, you should have the constitutional court, but in the case that there is not the possibility of the effective protection of the people, everything is absolutely useless because during the first Czechoslovak Republic, we had the constitutional court, we were the first who write uh, something about the constitutional court in the world, but because of we are Czech Republic, <laughs> Austria was quicker in the, in the effective uh, introductory of the, of the Constitutional Court. But this Constitutional Court during the first 20 years handled with 150 cases. Because as an individual you were unable to go to the Constitutional Court. On the other hand, the modern Czech Constitutional Court during the first uh, 20 years had about 80,000 cases thanks to the fact that as an individual you can go to the Constitutional Court. So there is the importance of the Catalog of Fundamental Rights. Wonderful word of Corvée, uh, uh, I'm not a French-speaking person, uh, we call that robota. 
it was uh, it was associated with the fact that the parliament in Kromnerish also in September 1848 decide, decided that uh, the robota the corvée will be abolished and uh, that was the great change in the development of Austria so uh, that's the topic which is also associated with the fact of the relation to the nobility because just for your imagination there was an idea that nobility um, had to receive about 90 million uh, uh, that was um, uh, golden uh, in the currency. So if we handled about topic that the salary was 100, uh, so it was quite uh, quite a huge amount. Um, what is um, quite important uh, if we are talking about constitution development, mainly the March Constitution from 1849. Uh, it was the document which was sincerely not uh, in the power like we should expect. But on the other hand, thanks to that constitution, there was also uh, a new guideline, the principles of the organization of judiciary. Uh, this, uh, this regulation were prepared mainly during the neo-absolutism, so there were some differences. But generally, we can say that this beginning of judiciary with small changes uh, at the 1890s and then in 1948 in, Czech Republic, in Czechoslovakia, it is still in power. So the, the model of judiciary of the Czech Republic has its source just in this period. And then also year 1848 has a great importance for the beginning of the Czech policy because as I said before thanks to the renewal of land ordinance uh, it was a little bit tricky to openly talk about uh, against the monarchy and against the ruler but on the other hand, the Czechoslovak policy uh, or the Czech policy was not so successful because in 1861 uh, 1871, it was prepared uh, some kind of compromise between Austrians and Czechs, but it was not successful also thanks to the fact uh, that um, there was a huge German minority uh, in, uh, in Czech lands. And that was the topic which uh, is uh, here again in uh, 1980 because uh, during the establishment of the uh, of the German Austria, um, uh, the, the act of the parliament in Vienna decided that the part of the state will be also the boarding area of the, of the uh, Czech lands and also Brno, Olomouc and Ihlava. Uh, and then it was here again at the year 1938, but uh, that was uh, absolutely another story. So we can say that the development uh, after 1848 was crucial for the future development of the, of the Czech Republic. As uh, I said before, the constitution of 1867 was the crucial document for the development of, uh, of Austria. Um, it, is quite, it is quite funny that Czech politicians used to say, and also historians and lawyers used to say that the December of Fasung uh, is uh, a constitution, the imposed constitution, Oktroy constitution, uh, because uh, Czechs were not participating in the parliament in Vienna during the adoption of this, uh, this constitution. Uh, if you are uh, asking why, it was quite simple, because Czech politicians decided not to go to the parliament to Vienna. So uh, we used to say that it is imposed constitution, uh, but our attitude uh, changed a bit after 1920 when we <laughs> adapted our constitution charter and this uh, constitution charter of 1920 was adapted by the Revolution and National Assembly where we're just Czech and Slovaks. So uh, no Germans, no Hungarians, no Poland's and so on. And then there was a change of attitude when we said oh, our constitution charter was, uh, was a democratic document adopted by parliament. Um, the constitution of uh, 1867 is also important for the preparation of constitution of 1920 because during the preparation they said that if there is a, uh, there is a matter of what they are unable to, to prepare in another way, they will rewrite the text from the constitution of 1867. And again, in 1992, when there was the preparation of the Czech constitution, there was an idea that in the case that they are unable to make up a new provision, they will rewrite that from the constitution charter of 1920. So we can say that the, that the uh, December for Fasungs are still alive in some, uh, some provisions in current Czech, uh, Czech constitutional life. 
I would like to thanks for your attention. I hope I was, maybe I have still uh, 16 seconds, <laughs> but thanks a lot for attention. Thanks for the possibility to be here with you. I hope uh, it was not boring for you. And uh, I um, hope that uh, any other interesting topics will be in the written version of my contribution. So thanks a lot and have a nice time.